Welcome everyone to the Science of Success. We're proud to present to you the Success Live Speaker Series, featuring in-person interviews with some of the incredible speakers from the Success Live event, including Brendan Burchard, Peter Vu, Todd Davis, and Tom Billu. Be sure to go to our website at successpodcast.com and sign up for our email list to receive tons of free evidence-based growth content from the number one source on the internet, the science of success. Without further delay, here's the Success Live Speaker Series. Welcome everyone, I'm Austin Fable, the producer of the Science of Success. We're here today with Peter Vu. Now, Peter's been labeled one of the world's leading authorities for millennials and entrepreneurs, having trained over 6,000 young entrepreneurs personally. You're the star of your own TV show, Entrepreneur Grind, host of the Young Entrepreneur Lifestyle Podcast and best-selling author of not one, but two books, Six Months to Six Figures, and Entrepreneur's Blueprint to Massive Success. Peter, how you doing today, man? Amazing. Just spoke on stage. I'm fired up. I'm excited. I don't know how I'm going to do this interview in a chair, but we'll see. <laughs> well, hopefully we can keep it there. We can move the camera if you want to jump yeah. up. So uh, being success live, I'm interested to know kind of what's your definition of success? I think it's just, I mean, living a world-class life that you're proud of. And, and knowing who you are, knowing your values, and living based off those. That's it. I mean, I used to complicate it and have five paragraphs, but it's just yeah. living a world-class life on your terms, doing what you love. That's it. I love that. I love that. So, you know, six months, six figures, um, there's kind of three keys to success that you sort of touch on. And what are those? And kind of run us through them. I mean, there's, there's whew, um, I think number one is gaining absolute clarity on who you are and simplifying everything in your head and shifting from complexity to simplicity. So just creating a simple document that has your values and your goals and what's most important to you and then the one skill you want to master to really go to the next level. So I think people overcomplicate things and there's so much noise in their head, they don't take any action. So I think complexity is the enemy of execution. That's number one, it's just getting clear on what you want and getting clear on who you are. Um, second thing is circle of influence. That made the biggest difference in my life. If I could pick one thing that, that changed the game for me, it's elevating who I was around on a daily basis. I think your circle of influence makes or breaks you. And I just see so many people having a circle of influence that holds them back. So you need to get rid of toxic people who don't make you feel amazing. You need to really, well, what I did is I had two lists of things. I had growth friends and maintenance friends. Maintenance friends are the ones that maybe you've kind of, ah, I want to hang out with them still because I knew them in middle school. Yeah, like but high school buddies. Yeah, but they really, when you're with them, they, they make you less ambitious. Right. Because people either hold you to high standards or they let you off the hook. There's no in between. So I had to create a list of people that I wanted to be around that, that challenged me, that made me think bigger, that really were doing big things. Mm. So that was my growth friends. Then my maintenance friends were the ones that kind of held me back. And it, it just depends on how bad you want success. Some people are like, I want to hang out with all those people too. Well, don't expect big success then. Just live congruently. So I got rid of all, I lowered the time I spent with my growth friends, or with my maintenance friends, and then I increased the time I spent with my uh, growth friends. That's gotta be hard though, right? I mean, what would you say to somebody who's got like some maintenance friends and it's like, man, I've known him since kindergarten, yeah. but he doesn't have a job, he doesn't go out and work, you know, how, how it's, do you It's hard, it is hard, but success, so is success. So Absolutely. it's like, you just gotta know what you want. I just, there's too many people that want level 10 success and level 10 income, but they have level four habits. And they're like, why do I not have this? Cause you're right here. Mm -hmm. And they're living so incongruently that they're frustrated. It's like, if you want this, everything has to align. So I just wanted success so bad, I wanted to impact people so bad, I wanted to travel the world so bad, that I was willing to lower the time I spent with them. And I challenged them, I said, hey, I want to lift you guys up and I want you guys to level up. And some of them are like, I'm, I'm excited, I'm ready. And they've, they're still crushing it. And some are just like working stagnant. at the mall. Not that it's bad, but they're stagnant and they don't care. Right. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing is just shifting your circle of influence. And there's a couple other ones. So you can pick, well, which, what other one do you want me to hit on as far well, as? Habits, I like habits, habits too, because I think habits you know, make or break you. And, yeah. and it can take time and, and you know, just like getting rid of some maintenance friends, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. And it's usually not very comfortable. No. But if you build the right habits, you know, instead of going out and getting drunk with your friends, your maintenance friends, staying home and reading another book, or maybe yep. like putting together a course or writing a blog. Post, 100%. I, I mean, th think they're so crucial. Yeah, habit, I think habits trump inspiration because inspiration is very short term and only lasts in the moment. I see people get that they're excited for a second watching a video, then they're back to bad habits. Right. You have to consistently put the right habits in. What are your non negotiables for the week that are relevant to your vision? And consistently put those habits in because habits trump inspiration. I could never be inspired again the next year and I will still work out five days a week because I'm used to it because I because I have such habits that I've created I don't even think about it I just will drive to the gym and another habit too is, is making sure that you're increasing your confidence account every single day by making the tough decision like you just said 
every decision you make makes or breaks you. And you want to create decisions that your future self thanks you for. Right. So for me, I was always, when I was broke and frustrated, I was always making the easy decisions and I was letting my emotions guide me. And I was like, oh, this decision doesn't matter. I'll eat the cheeseburger, I'll go out late, I'll drink. But now I'm like, no, I want to make the tough decision. So one of the biggest habits you can make is making the tough decision in the moment and getting addicted to the outcome at the end of that. I think it's so, I mean, the confidence count, I love that because it's like you, if you have these habits that make you feel better and make you know you're doing the right thing, you're going to address the day yeah. in a more kind of triumphant sort of yep. forward thinking way. And if you don't have confidence, you will find a way to lose. And that's the Absolutely. scary thing. So what happens is if you don't have confidence, you might have a little success, but you will drag yourself back to the bottom if you don't have confidence. And I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. So no, nothing I teach or share is something that I read in a book and I'm like, hey, that sounds good. Let's teach it. It's all the stuff I've been through. Yeah. So it's like, I, I know that it's tough. And if you're in that situation, I was in the exact situation, broke and discouraged and frustrated. And I just, you have to have the right habits to get you out and elevate your circle of influence. So it's, it's just a game changer. So something else you talk about that I love is, you know, turning your hard work into elite results. So taking the work and seeing the outcome. And a couple points on there that really stuck with me is just extreme scheduling, blocking things out. You use the quote, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. How does this, you know, preparation, the scheduling, the sticking to a routine and habits prepare you for those moments where things do go crazy, things don't work out? Yeah, you have to be able to adapt and adjust. But for me, I mean, I never start my week without it written on paper first. So, and you have to think about this. If you maximize today, tomorrow will take care of itself. As far as scheduling, maximizing your productivity, if you maximize the week, the months will take care of themselves. If you maximize your months, your years are amazing. I still don't understand how someone can have a bad year and then another bad year. Right. What the hell do you do? Have you not self-corrected? For else? once in 365 days? <laughs> yeah. Or someone, I could see a bad week. There's a thing, I don't know if I even said it in my book, Michael Jordan, this was a big inspiration from my perspective. Um, he averaged 30 points a game his whole career. And every game he had less than 15, his next game was over 45. Wow. So he never had two bad games in his whole career. Not once. He never had two bad games. So I'm like, is that coincidence? No, it's Michael Jordan. After a bad game, what do you think he did? He went, obviously, back to the gym, thought about what he was doing wrong. He looked at the film, and he told himself, I'm not having two bad games in a row. So you have to go through your life the same way. If you have a bad day, so what? Everyone has those. It's, are you gonna have two bad days or three bad days? So if you have a string of bad days, it's your fault. You have one or two bad days, eh, that's fine. But you have a bad week, you need to course correct. Okay. So that's what I mean by scheduling. Just thinking things through, be purposeful. Think, like I ask myself three questions every morning. What am I grateful for? What am I excited about? What am I committed to making happen no matter what? I love that. Yeah, so that's, it's just, scheduling's huge. I think that even comes back to habits, but on the flip side, I mean, if you allow yourself to continue to have three, four, five bad days, that's gonna become a habit, yeah. and that's a habit you don't want. And then you have downward momentum. Absolutely. Yep, 100%. Something else you touch on is, uh, you know, strict, deliberate practice. You know, I've heard uh, a lot about practice, you know, it's like the 10,000 hours rule, but in your mind, what's deliberate practice and how's it different than you know, just normal practice? Well, I think deliberate practice is being very intentional in what you're practicing and making sure the skill you're practicing is relevant to your vision and your values. Mm -hmm. So you could deliberate practice something that's not relevant and you're never going to make money doing it. So I think deliberate means just being intentional and purposeful and switching. So for me, if I need help with marketing, I will deliberately practice that for six months or a year. I'll be very purposeful and I'll make sure I have the best training, I hire the right people and I'll work on that. I won't do 10 things at once. Let's get marketing and this and this and this. No, I'll go on that. Then six months later, I will deliberately practice something else that's relevant to my business. So I think it's just being intentional and focusing on mastery, not overload, where it, it's maybe someone can do it, but I've never seen someone master and get amazing at like five things at once. Yeah, I've seen the jack of all trades. Like I know broke geniuses. It's a, it's a scary yeah. thing. I know people that are brilliant but broke. Yeah. It's like, can't you take some of your intelligence and do something that you can monetize? Mm -hmm. But they know everything. I think know-it-alls are despised in this new economy. The learn-it-alls are what's going to really take over. So deliberate practice is just understanding your values and what your ideal outcomes are and then practicing only what's relevant to that until it's mastered. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll end with a story and we can go from there. This is an awesome setting, by the way. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, man. We appreciate your time. And I know you've got a lot to do, so we're going to kind of start wrapping up. But I'm curious, you know, you've met a lot of people. You've done a lot of things. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Whew, it's been a couple. I think there's two. Um, don't fear people. So don't fear what people think. And two, which has made the biggest impact, is take very few opinions. 
So that. someone told me that when I was like 23, and I, and at the time I'm like, what do you mean? I take a lot of opinions. Yeah, of that's course, what I was told. Like people you have around and you. Like, no, you're... only take opinions from people that a you would trade places with, or b that you really respect that are doing what you want to do. So that it served me well because there's so many opinions out there, and 98% of them are just from people that you don't even want to trade places with them. Yeah. So just take few opinions and just drop the need to be liked or stop fearing people. Those have made a big difference. That's so crazy. Like if I wouldn't swap places with you, why would I listen to what you guys say? People still do it. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, so Peter, I know you're very busy, but I want people to know where they can find you. So where can we look you up, learn more? Um, so you can uh, learn more at peterjvoog.com, my website. I'm big on social media, Instagram, Peter J. Vug, And then we have an exclusive academy, like we talked about, that is um, you have to apply stuff to get into, but sure. GameChangersMovement.com, they can check that out. And cool. we've had some amazing speakers and a lot of success with that. So, yeah, find me and let me know if you heard about me from here, and I'll definitely give them some time if they have any questions or anything. Absolutely. Cool. Well, guys, go look up Peter. It's been great talking to you, man. Yeah, I appreciate sure, man. the time. You too, man. Uh, much continued success, sir. Thank you, man. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed our interview from the Success Live event. Be sure to go to our website for all of the other amazing interviews and tons of additional free content from the number one evidence-based growth source on the internet, The Science of Success. Get all this and more sent directly to your inbox by going to successpodcast.com and signing up for our email list today.